Jess. She's our mental health authority at Vandalia and social worker, clinical social worker by trade. And so earlier, in the earlier part of the podcast, we talked a lot about relationships, theories, tips, tricks, everything. But one of her other areas of interest and expertise is trauma, which corrections is no stranger Mm -hmm. to trauma. So we thought we'd talk about that a little bit. Um, What's something interesting you've learned in, you know, all your studies or Mm. reading? Observation. A lot of things. So relating to trauma, the I mean, just in general, like we don't work out when we're stressed out. And most people in corrections, I've realized, they just stop working out. They might lift a little, but they're just not getting, they're not finishing their stress cycle. Um, and they're not really processing the traumas that are that are happening with anyone. So, so it causes us to like pause? Yeah, it, it causes, it just, it doesn't help us get through the thing. So if you can process stuff with someone about 72 hours after you've been through it, you're less likely they find to it to become PTSD. Um, there's something we do called a tip, um, which is a trauma therapy thing. Um, which we can, it's a whole, just a bunch of acronyms basically, but we can process it with eye movements, whatever the thing is that people went through to make them less likely to have that be another thing. That's a PTSD issue. So, so, so for example, uh, throw some scenarios in your way, right? A mm-hmm. uh, staff assault. Uh, or uh, in, uh, an individual in custody suicide, yeah. or uh, a hostage situation, or um, any type of code one, mm-hmm. right? When it comes to us as security staff, yeah, what's the importance of, of working through that trauma? And what do those scenarios, how do those affect us? Yeah, so if, if we don't work through them, they find that our body is naturally going to fight, flight, freeze, or numb, disassociate. Most of us, we numb because you can't start screaming at people anymore. It's not the yeah. thing we do in corrections, right? Um, uh, we're not spoke. Yeah. Well, as we yeah. all, okay. But as much. <laughs> I'm saying that. I'm air quoting, right? There's air quotes. Yeah. But, um, so yeah. So just knowing that we're probably going to numb out. Like if I'm too stressed, I just numb. It's fine. I'm like, what am I numbing? Like look around. What do I see? Like get present again. Okay. So it's like grounding techniques yeah. you're talking about. Yep. There's some grounding. Um, or that's your day that maybe you need to take a day off. And just have a minute away from the okay. place. So I just, I, I, I know just, because a lot happens at prisons, obviously. Yeah. Say Luke and I are working a wing, and I'm on C and D wing, or C wing or D wing, and Luke's on the other wing, and he mm-hmm. calls a code one. Yep. Right? Mm-hmm. What happens to our bodies in those situations when it comes to that stress that can cause right. a, I Let's give some more detail. Yeah. So just okay. make a pretty realistic scenario, just so we can... Mm-hmm. Uh, Let's say I'm responding to um, an agitated person in custody. They ended up striking me. Mm -hmm. I'm getting backed in a corner, getting hit, and then you're the first responder on the scene. You called the code one Mm -hmm. and I respond. And ultimately you and let's say a couple other people had to respond. They they do break it up. I sustained – had to go to the hospital but was home that night and sustained some some minor injuries, maybe a few stitches. That's a very realistic – Yeah. So just knowing – What advice would you give – well, either of us who are yeah. involved in that, you know, what steps should we take and, and maybe even backing up saying what is likely to happen, how does this play out, and then how yeah. do we intervene? Yeah, just knowing about your brain, what it's going to do. It's going to have those things that happen that save our lives to have us respond some way. Um, and then whoever hears it on the radio, at least that's what I've experienced, we're all wondering, well, what's going on? What's going on, right? So there's this sort of trickle effect that's going to impact us all, right? And c- same with us being a state agency, we're going to have kind of top down. People are going to wonder what happened. Like there's a lot of pieces that are involved with this. So we could all be impacted on this really high, high stress level, especially in a, something like an assault. Yeah. I mean, that just sort of makes it a reality of like, oh God, we could all be hurt. Like, what is that? And then it's community. Then it's our families. So it's such a, it could be such a community impact of everyone being stressed out, you know? So it affects our mind, body, and soul. I mean, it just does. So what do we do for self-care? What do we, do we, you know, in those moments? Yes. So you mentioned 72 hours is kind of a critical point to yeah. have some kind of processing, right. whether it's formal or informal. Mm-hmm. I know like with somatic experiencing, and they've really looked at more animalistic models and mm-hmm. how they do some of those physical activities mm-hmm. and, and how that kind of like dissipates that energy, right. if you yeah. will, I guess. Yeah. So like I write, like that's a big piece. I play the guitar. Something, the EMDR brain is we do left 
like eye movement desensitization. It's what the VA uses to process trauma. Um, so what I've learned is anything that mimics the kind of REM sleep, that left and right brain that we do for babies, you know, when, or when we're trying to get them to fall asleep or their eye movement REM. Um, but something that we can get them to process stuff. So when in doubt, just writing it out is what I tell people. Have a mm. man journal or whatever and write out what happens. A Myrtle. A Myrtle. <laughs> there you go. A Myrie. Yeah. Anything left. I mean, for me, even walking and talking to my buddy helps yeah. something, you know, guys, a lot of times they talk side by side versus across. That's the, the awkwardness of counseling is sort of like you're across from each other and they found men on average are next to each other. So they might walk, sit in a bar next to each other. Like there's not a lot of. No eye contact. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh gosh. You know, even right now you're probably like, oh gosh, they're looking at me. Yeah. You know, it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, just some way to start moving. But when in doubt, if you can exercise, that would be amazing. Get some cardio in. Do something to process that stuff. Yeah. I heard a, a study recently, and again, we don't have a ton of studies on corrections. Yeah. They're out there. A lot of them are done more on other first responders and police officers. Mm -hmm. But like, as far as how our bodies handle stress, body types, mm -hmm. they find that like police officers kind of, kind of have a, a two-tailed distribution, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So they're the types that are workout nuts that you know look like they could be you know in the mma or amateur <laughs> bodybuilders and then there are the types that you, all you can eat diet you yes, know like yeah. see it you can eat it mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of in between mm -hmm. because of the it's kind of the two ways our bodies react to that stress mm -hmm. and it's hard to, yes. to to do that and i think corrections is is that way too we do have a lot of people who are workout fiends we yeah. have um, Chico, who we've had on the podcast, uh, this one and the last one, like teaches, and he was at your He's facility, my buddy. Yep. teaches kickboxing yep. classes yep. and he does all this cool stuff. Yeah. And, and certainly that physical part was how he worked out some of the trauma along with some mm -hmm. of the mental parts. Mm -hmm. But, um, so maybe it's easier to do if you already do, but like, let's say, you know, let's say you kind of, you know, you work out once or twice a week, you're dabbling and your habits aren't really good. And then this trauma happens, mm -hmm. you know, what should somebody be looking to do in the first couple of days after? Let's say physically they're okay. Like okay. obviously if you have a broken leg, right. you know, you can't move things are off the table. Let's say physically they're okay. Right. I mean, of course, I would love if they could go see a counselor. I know that's hard around here. so I And to get in in that time frame could be difficult, too. Yes, it could be. Um, so just having a person in, that you can trust, even, that can be neutral would be great. I mean, like, I have a great best friend that I could tell her anything, and she still loves me no matter what. You know, we don't all have that, especially. Sometimes guys don't have that. Some, some do. Um, but if you could have a person that you can talk to, um, that would be a life changing really to tell them what's really going on, what you're really struggling with. But sometimes pride gets in the way, which we've talked about. Yeah. So you, I mean, you guys even tell me what would you guys do with knowing pride is a piece. So, so times. for me, I have my, my four people. Yeah. You know? uh, I have Luke, I have Amy, I have like three other people. So yeah. it's more like, it's more like six yeah. of, 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 of a small group of people. Yeah. Who I go to when I'm yeah. struggling with something, um, because of everything else to me, honestly, is more like surface surface communication mm -hmm. that I have with other people. Right. Um, it's hard to break that barrier with those people first, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but once you break it, you find how easy it is just to talk yeah. and be open about what you're going through and what you struggle with. Right. Um, again, I was I was very prideful, me personally. So I don't know. You... Yeah, it'd be tough. Um, certainly I have, you know, a, a couple of really good friends who, you know, I'm a guy, we don't have a bunch of phone conversations, but we text all the time and chat and share, mm -hmm. probably start there, you know, to some degree, some comfort, you know, like if I was part of a trauma discussing it with my wife, mm -hmm. um, you know, my father and stepmother have been through corrections, so they know I've got another really, really good buddy um, who's uh, a sergeant who I feel like I could reach out to then our folks on staff wellness like Joe, yeah. um, Chuck and John, even though I haven't had to yeah, cause I haven't had a trauma, but I definitely mm -hmm. would feel like, you know, boy, if I had to, these right. guys have dealt with it. They've responded. There'd be a lot of things I wouldn't have to say. I wouldn't feel mm -hmm. like terribly judged. Maybe they don't give me all the answers, but mm -hmm. I'd be in a better place right. than before I called them. If I called them. So uh, yeah. I know yeah, I've taken from Amanda and myself, mm -hmm that thought process of saying I have a buddy from work who wants to call me and he's mm -hmm. going through a hard time. I internalize and I, I've internally, I make a decision. Does he want a solution 
Or does he, or, or does he just want to vent? And that's what Good. I tell him. Maybe you need to call me and just yell, vent, cry. Mm -hmm. Well, if you want to work something out, let me know. Mm -hmm. uh, but even you can obviously kind of tell. For some people, you can tell in the middle of the discussion where it's going to go yeah. and what they want. Yeah. Uh, and if I can tell personally that they just want to vent, mm -hmm. I let them vent. You know, I let them know I hear you. Yeah. I, I hear what you're yeah. saying. I can relate. Right. I get it. Yeah. I understand. It's it's it's, it's a shit show. It's crazy right now. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but then also you have the friends who, who do want to, and at times I do want a solution because I know mm -hmm. I can get very tunnel vision at times. I can get very yeah. narrow, very narrow minded, yeah. and I'm going to be always right. You said earlier that we're all right, we right? All uh, are. Yeah. But I, I get that mindset yeah. that I'm right, and there's no other outcome to this scenario than what Joe thinks. Well, maybe Joe, you just want a task too, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, don't just leave me here with this. Give me, you know, maybe you don't have the solution, but point me in a direction. Or yes, two. And, yeah. And when I've worked with many of the veterans that I've worked with, other friends, people through staff wellness, one of the things I found is I do a lot of validating and complimenting um, because, boy, it takes a whole hell of a lot to share. It does. And kind of meta processing, like yeah. let's just call time. Let's call time out. You know, Jess, you just this is a really difficult thing. Mm -hmm. That's unprecedented. Right. What is it like talking with me about this right now? You know, yeah. just invite that kind of feedback and say, "Yeah, God, this is impressive. Yeah. They've got the courage two days out from this to right. to share this with somebody who's right. almost a stranger." Yep. Um, and really, like letting them know that like things aren't going to be perfect a day out or two days out, right? Like, right. and how you feel is not wrong. Yeah. But there are just kind of some boundaries we want to look at, like obviously the self harm mm -hmm. stuff or like not engaging in any of the tasks you really need to do or being there mm -hmm. at all for your family. Like let's yeah. look out for those. Otherwise what you're feeling is pretty normal. And then, you know, if they want resources or solution, point them in the direction of a couple things, but mm -hmm. uh, try to keep that kind of minimal. Right. Yeah. And I think it depends on if it, the thing happens at work, sometimes we can bond through the crazy stuff. Mm -hmm. If it's at home, yeah. like a going through a divorce or whatever, right? Or kids sick, God forbid, like whatever that it's sometimes harder. Maybe I wonder if there's some more burdening stuff that happens when it's at home versus at work. We're like, did you see this at work? You know, we bond through that. I think we, we can relate at work and this is yeah. all my, my perspective yeah. of this at work. You know, if we're working housing unit and you work security and you work corrections, yeah, I can talk about work with you, right? Left and right. right, and that's how you and I can overcome yep. something and break it down. Yep. When it comes to personal, you don't know my yes. family, you don't know yes. uh, anything about my kids really. Now, those who really know me know all these, right? But like, I guess that would probably be the, the roadblock, maybe, yeah. in regards to talking about what you struggle with at home, like mm -hmm. I, I bring it up to Luke or bring it up to another person at work. Yeah, uh, that's just my perspective, my opinion. Yeah. Because that's where I worry that some of that burden, I'm alone stuff happens yeah. when it's stuff about home. Stuff about like, hey, I miss my wife. Why are this. you bringing this in here? Yeah. You know, yeah. That staff assault work. happened to all yeah. of us. Of course we can talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Like, like you and your wife fighting. Like, yeah. This is work, man. Yeah. yeah. Or of course your wife cheated. Did you just see how she acted? Like whatever. Like there's yeah. so much fear. It's, it's almost like it's a domino effect. Yeah. Right? When it comes to what we face at work. Yeah. And, and the turmoil and the frustrations. And, and we bring it home. Like I've always said, we always bring it home with we us. We do. Which will cause us arguments, which will spiral right. into other types of arguments, will then cause issues at the home life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so, yeah, just that personal level of that personal struggle with our spouses and our significant others, mm -hmm. some of us don't realize, we don't want to acknowledge or right. understand or face the truth. Or like our pride get out of the way when it comes to, yeah, it's connected. It is. Like, like, yeah. like it's going to be connected somewhere. Yeah. And there's such a fear. I mean, the guys I've talked to, they're like, one guy told me that his buddy said people who are on medication are, what do you say, lazy or their brain, they won't let their brain work fast enough to fix their anxiety. Yeah. So he's on an anxiety med and he's like, I guess I can't tell my buddy I'm on this med. Yeah. You know, there's so much stuff there. Yeah. Would there be the, you know, bring up the example, would there be the embarrassment um, if he had strep throat and took an antibiotic? Would there nope. be the embarrassment if you were diabetic and took insulin? Nope. You know, and yeah. and again, our, you know, our, our mental health medication. Your body's weak. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, if they're, you, they're, have, you don't have enough dopamine in your brain. That's but there were some classic thinkers in in the mental health field who really thought that you could sort of white knuckle and think and like mm -hmm. cognitively get your way out of depression. And I have found those models are just short. Certainly, yeah. some of the things they do help. Right. Um, 
you know, your environment influences your brain, your brain influences the environment, right. you know, your behaviors, how you think and feel, all those things yeah. can influence, but research time and time again shows that combined therapy, mm -hmm. medication plus some kind of supportive talk therapy, evidence-based, whatever, tends to not only work the best, the fastest, and have the longest lasting yeah. results. And it could keep you and your spouse doing the work too. You're in, yeah. you're back in the ring. You're not just like, I'm fine, honey. I'm fine. And she knows you're not fine and yeah. she misses you, right? So she's going to get that connection somewhere. And I'm hoping that you can turn towards each other and be like, I'm not really fine, but I don't really want to talk about it yeah, right yeah. now. Oh, okay. And have you ever, have you found patients or folks you work with, um, have like big misconceptions about medication. I mean, a lot of people oh, think yeah. that we could prescribe yes. as counselors. We have a, 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 you know, a partial expertise about medication, but we have right. to be very careful about kind of the, and limit the advice we give right. about that because we aren't um, prescribers, but a lot of people either sort of the lazy brain theory mm -hmm. or boy, I take this pill and I'm never going to have a bad thought and everything's yeah. going to be hunky dory. Yes. Or they just want to, yeah, only take the pill, no counseling. It doesn't want it. They want. We don't want both, and I don't know what that's about. But it's like I took those, and it should fix everything. Because talking about it makes you feel emotions, right? Yeah. And we don't want to feel emotion. Let's just numb all the pain. Let's numb the frustration. Let's numb uh, our emotions. Just give me the pill, and we'll call it a day. Right. Like it, to me, that's the easy way. Right? But the thinking errors that come with Absolutely. some of that, like all or nothing thinking, is so like you either yeah. love me or hate me. Like there's mm -hmm. just things that like, mm -hmm. and it's like really, can there be? I call it the messy middle. My friend Karen Gilmore, she's a really amazing therapist. She said, messy middle. Like, we can be in this messy middle in corrections. We might feel burnout, but it's not a forever. It's a messy yeah. middle, right? And that's a hard place because we want to, like, have this amazing life or not or, like, whatever, you know, we want to fix the things. I think people would probably be surprised, too, that when, and again, I'm not going to say all counselors, psychiatrists, whomever mm -hmm. are good. There are quacks in every single field <laughs> you go to. You know, an accountant, an architect, whoever. There, there's idiots in every right. field. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and, and some of us work here but uh, and get to podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, if you've got somebody that's good, like when you said feeling, I think before we were recording, we were talking about like that feeling out that professional relationship. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like yeah. you shouldn't come in thinking like that prescriber's got an agenda that I'm going to put you on this med, on this dose, or this mm -hmm. therapist has got this particular counseling thing that right. like it should be a collaborative endeavor and you know i tell our folks in custody like we're making you the appointment because we think getting evaluated for the medication mm -hmm. makes really good sense but i want you to go in there and ask questions and feel confident right, right. you know if that prescriber you know says hey i want to try this that mm -hmm. you say yes or no for the right reason right you know and yeah. that you're willing to to bend a little bit their way yeah right and you know, and they call it a practice mm -hmm. because yeah. you may have to try a couple medications before you find that one that yeah. kind of helps lift your mood. And there's plenty of people that they try one one medication that didn't work. I couldn't sleep or I couldn't whatever. And it's like, okay, then how do we, as a counselor, I would want to talk to them about how to advocate for themselves, like how to go back to the psychiatrist or the nurse practitioner and say, hey, this isn't really working. Instead of cold turkeying it or whatever, yeah, like, yeah. what do you do, right? And there's lots um, of you know side effects from every kind of treatment initially that mm -hmm. after a short period of time you can get over and there's some you won't. Right. And so having that discussion with your provider, like yeah. say for instance you had some stomach discomfort or you know a mild headache or mm -hmm. something, they'll have symptoms that they can tell you, yeah, these are normal, they should go away. Mm -hmm. Boy, if you have these, we need to stop the medication right. because you're not the right kind of person yeah. for this. Like yeah. you you metabolize it differently. Right. And if you can't have that conversation with your providers, I believe you should get a different provider. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Like not every person is going to be your counselor, not every psychiatrist, whatever. Yeah. You know, some, I might feel really judged when I say stuff. Like you could, I know we all know, especially helpers. Like she just rolled her eyes when I said that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. What'd I say? You know, but how do we call that provider out? Cause that's awkward. Yeah. I've had people call me as a therapist out. Hey, I feel like you're canceling. You canceled our appointment. I was like, Oh, I'm sorry. Like, I'm on call. So sometimes I have to cancel on a fret, right? Like, yeah, so I have yeah. to have certain clients too that are flexible, that can take and give feedback. Not everyone wants a counselor who's like, hey, can you give me some feedback on how this is going? Because that's awkward. If we're a conflict avoidant people, we don't want to give feedback to our counselor. Yeah. But like, see, it's going I, right. That's one of my favorite <laughs> things to do yeah. in, in therapy is from the very get-go, start out 
an offer up that, hey, you're going to be a part of this process. Yeah. I want you to feel me out. I'm going to feel you out. Let's give it three or four sessions. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to get everything right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, do I have your permission to have a little leeway? Mm-hmm. And then do you also agree that if I'm wrong, you'll kind of take it, tweak it, yeah. fix it, and then give it back to me? Because I may have something that's partially that's right, good. and I need you to help me, right? Yeah. And if I get it wrong, it's certainly not mean spirited right. right. and then i also want to get i want you to give me feedback like yeah how was it or like you know you, i think you made a weird face when this happened yeah. or like yeah you know it was really hard telling you this because i think you were judging me right yes like yeah. i need you to have the courage and i will have the courage to not be defensive when you bring those right. up because right us navigating this professional relationship together yeah is going to model every other relationship and make that healthier so if we it can is. kind of stop and practice in real time of working through what could be potentially conflict, imagine what you can do in real life. Because mm-hmm. some people think cut off will fix the thing. And it's like, then we look at your family, maybe we've cut off from everyone in the family. Oh, yeah. that's what I learn when things are tough. I just cut off. Oh, okay, let's talk about it. What so that's something I'm personally working on right now. Yeah. So it's funny you bring that cut off because my biggest thing lately has been surrounding myself with positive energy, right? Positive people. Now, people who are willing to criticize and be honest. Mm-hmm. But just the constant negative barrage type people yeah. that always has to say something smart or insult or attack, mm-hmm. I have literally just stopped talking to. And it's hard because I know that's probably a big fault of mine, cold turkey, but at the same time, I know it's helped me yeah, uh, yeah. mentally and emotionally because yeah. now I really don't care what you have to say yeah. about me. I don't yeah. care... About the energy that you want to project on me because you're right. not happy. Right. Uh, and so for me, it's it's. I should probably be a little bit more different with how I handle it. I kind of feel like. Mm-hmm. See, so you want to have more flexible boundaries there, mm-hmm. like as opposed to just saying I think I was always, anybody who's negative is out. All maybe. Or well, yeah. yeah, like for me, I was always just because I was always allowing it to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Uh, cause yeah. in corrections, I I was in my asshole stage. Right. And then I was kind of in the pleasing stage of kind of getting to know when everybody is my friend and yeah. we're all just one big happy group. And then reality set in with me personally from right. multiple situations right. that just because Luke says he's my boy, he's really not my boy. Right. Or, you know, just because you say you and yeah. my friends, you're yeah. really not one of my friends and you're yeah. just using and right. or just talking right. negative about it. And yeah. so I have literally cut those people out. And I, I don't think it's necessarily bad. I mean, I've been in five years, so it's not like I've been in Crickers forever. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I sort of like test the waters like a little duckling. We have little ducklings at home now. So kind of just put a little something out there and then just see if they... I've got to see this pain. farm. We've got chickens getting thrown in the air. <laughs> yeah, chickens walking around. Like all the, he's a state worker, too. So there's just like do a have, lot. They're all doing this. Do you have this. goats? No, not yet. But apparently oh, wow. we're getting a hog. But I'm not killing the hog. I'm not doing it. So it's a whole other story. Wilbur? I don't know. We'll see. Just name him Bacon. Bacon. Oh, sad. Yeah. But anyway, so like the idea of like, hey, how's it going? I, I mean, I'm the I'm nice to people, and people usually the, the feedback I get is I'm too nice, and they they are concerned by that. Yeah. So if that's all they got. Like, that's is she fine. genuine? Like, yeah. is it, does it's she? Okay. I'm nice. It's fake. What's, What's she trying to get yeah. from that? Right. Fake. I don't need yeah. anything. I, I got pigs that are not pigs yet, but well, it's chicken. tough. I mean, I see what you're saying, Joe, and like the, there are people that. Like, we could get step raises, you know, we could come in and, like, new infrastructure, hire, you know, hire more people, and the literate environment of our work could improve 20-fold, and they're so cute. Well, I don't know. That's like, yeah, it's fine. what would make you happy, right. my God? Yeah. Like, yes, what like, do you yeah. need? The way we were working, yeah, it stunk sometimes, but we were all getting by, we had good checks, we had a good brotherhood, sisterhood. Mm-hmm. And then these things improved and you're still just, you know, yeah. like Debbie Downer. I guess like, that'll for me it was. Yeah. Yeah. My mother-in-law's name is Debbie, so I feel bad because I actually said it Poopy. to her. I, I said a, it to her once. She was like, oh. I, I had, like, a, I had a patient. I think she had a friend named Debbie, so she said, I'm going to call it Poopy Patty. Poopy <laughs> Patty. Patty's like, oh. I think for me it was just draining. Yeah. Oh, at yeah. At one point because it was just draining. And then I realized literally just instantly, mm-hmm. what's the point? Of engaging in a negative, you gotta protect your energy. It's okay. Yeah. It goes to back to that yourself. cup, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, your cup's gonna be low by the job you do. Any job, not just corrections. Yeah. I mean, like getting paid to work. This whole idea of like having to leave home, <laughs> yeah. do something for money. 
without so my, why are we doing this? Without my cell phone? Like, yeah, what? No, that, I'm just like, this whole the idea of like having oh, to work man. for a living anywhere. Like, oh, yeah. It's kind yeah. of a weird idea. And it's not... It's not always been the case right. for our species, right? There was more right. trading, more agriculture, more seasonal stuff. True. Like, but it, it so in and of itself is kind of weird and can be taxing, even if you have a job that you're very, very happy about. Yeah. yeah. Not you to know, mention like, we might have kids at home that are sick, and yeah. it's like, okay, can they go to daycare? Wait, they don't. Look, they're good, right? Like we don't like it's so stressful. Yeah. It's like so many pieces. You can't send them to grandma's when they're sick because then what about grandma? You know. Just as working parent, like it's just so many extra layers. Yeah. So you know, any work environment, yeah. and, and having dual roles of yeah. you know, husband, wife, friend, neighbor, whatever, and mm -hmm. worker is very difficult. But I think corrections, like we we're all kind of here and say like mm. that provides even a deeper layer right. of that yeah. stress. And yeah. so like understanding your cup, and it's like. You know, say let's say you're the negative one at work, Joe, always like yeah. complaining or something. Like, you know, he gets his job done or whatever, but like he'll come over and talk me ear off or something. Like knowing like Joe has some value, right? He does something Thank good. You. I appreciate it. You know, like <laughs> just met you, but you do. He'd have my back if it, this is the the fake Joe, yeah. like not oh, not this Joe. Yeah. We're just using him. For, this is DJ Muscle Hamster Joe. Yeah, DJ <laughs> Muscle it. Hamster. The Muscle Hamster Joe. Right. So it's not like not giving this person any time mm -hmm. or saying you hate them or like yeah. I can never talk to them again, mm -hmm. but it's just saying like, I'm going to limit my time because mm -hmm. you know, I'm looking at my energy meter and doo, 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 mm -hmm. doo, right. doo. like yeah. I'm not going to stay with this person for longer. You mm -hmm. know, I go and talk to, you know, Billy and four house, a lot more positive. He's talking about the future stuff yeah. he's going to do on the weekend. We got solutions for how we're going to clean the wing up and like yeah. fix the log checks or whatever. Like, boy, that seems to be a lot more. Yeah energy filled. I, I have mm -hmm. come from cutting people out mm -hmm. to now limiting. Mm -hmm. So that's dialectical theory. Right. So mm -hmm. it's that's a big word, Luke. So smart. And what yeah. we use Stop it. Don't feed that. They have made it they have made that into a fancy therapy for for other things. But essentially there's an idea, the thesis, and then there's the opposite idea, the antithesis, the antithesis. And so think of a pendulum swinging. We've lost him. So like you have an idea of like you know what he just said? No. Okay. Every every so you have two ideas. Everybody should be given your time. They're all good. If people are bad, cut them out. Don't ever talk to them, right? Yeah. Mm. And so that pendulum swings, right, until it finds what to you what a happy medium is, right? So you went from everybody's good to to hell with them if yeah. you're draining my cup yeah. to kind of like. You know, that pendulum swinging, yeah. like, yeah. all right, I'll give him a little bit of time, but I'm not going to, like, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be there all day getting my cup emptied. Yeah. So that's yeah. just this process of, like, integrating an idea. Yeah. That's how you see it. That's how yeah. you get black yeah. and white. See, that's all you totally. had to say. I'm with you. I, I get it. Yeah. I, I guess I, to I took yeah. the long way around. I forgot. Story. What was you the name black, of the white, white again? <laughs> you got black, white, <laughs> and then you get some kind of shade of gray. I can't have a speech impediment. What was it called? Antithesis. Antithesis. Just spell it out like antithesis, antithesis. Okay. What did you I say the first time? Ant, ant, like the little bug. Ant, ant, tithesis. Tithesis. Ant, tithesis. <laughs> You're so cute when you say it. He's got a little bit of a list. Antithesis. <laughs> well, Pickle guys, pilot. that's the end of the fourth. Yeah, everybody. But yeah, that's that integrated thinking, and like, right? It, and yeah. no doubt, you probably had some similar patterns. Yeah. We're talking about the last episode with kind of opening up to mm -hmm. the wife, like. Okay, not open at all. Maybe open the floodgates too much, and then I've kind of learned how to balance. Well, with her and I, like, I, I no, not with her and I. It, it's been very much. Once I realize I need to open that door, mm -hmm. that door has been open. Good, right? good. But with with other people who I know are really in my inner circle, or I consider really really close friends, yeah, who are always negative, who are always insult, insulting or attacking. Right. Yeah, it was instantly the hell with them. Like I'm yeah. done. And then lately it's been kind of, all right, let's sit down and have a talk. Luke, I'll have child break with you. We can, we can catch up. How was your day? Mm -hmm. Internally, like it's, it's a struggle, but externally, yeah. I feel like I'm doing a great job externally trying to do it. And I'm trying yeah. to get my mindset to, yeah. you know, maybe there's, maybe he was going through something at that time in his life last year. Yeah. And looking at him as he was just a jerk and he was insulting to now, maybe he's matured a little bit and I have too. Let's re-talk. Let's restart possibly a friendship again. 
That's kind of is, been... Question. Oh, God. Is there a should yeah. in that? I when? should sit down and talk to this guy? No, Just kind no, of a drink yeah. last year? No, I mean, oh. I, I'm not saying one individual. <laughs> I'm just wondering, like, overall. But, but I have. hypothetical. Should, yeah. should What it? was that one word? Antithesis? <laughs> yes, yeah. that's it. Yeah, that's what it is. Close enough, Jeff. Just okay. keep saying that Thank in you. sentences. Uh, Please. No, I It's can't. like Mississippi. How many ippies? <laughs> Mississippi. I can say Mississippi, but antithesis, I can't. Okay? <laughs> I'm done. Banana. B a n a n a n a n a. Thank you for that song. What was that song? Yeah, that's a good one. We can't say the name of the song. Yeah, but no, there is a should. Hollaback girl, I think. Yeah, there's a hollaback. And I'm just wondering if there's other people that can be there for that person because maybe they're just not everyone is my people. Like I just know that, right? Like super closed mind. Like just like this is how we're gonna do it always. Like, oh, this plush sucks. All like, yeah, it does. Like, what do you do? Like, you know what I, mean? that? I don't know. I'm sorry. Okay. I do voice. I, someone called me out one you're, time. You're making like, fun of my speech impediment over here. I had to do a jab at least. Why some do I do point voices? Now. I was gonna do improv. It was a thing yeah. back home in Washington, okay. but then we moved. Okay. It rains too so much. It, I have to go to Chicago or St. Louis to do improv. Yeah, I don't imagine there's a big Vandalia. No, in we could probably have one. Yeah, we should probably have one. Be fun. But great improv seeing in Chicago. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, my buddy Joe that I mentioned earlier, he did some improv okay. Chicago. He's actually written a few books on um, like Forever Twenty Seven. So you know how like Chris Farley, Jim, mm -hmm. like all the famous people that died mm -hmm. at age twenty seven, oh, wow. and then he actually like you know worked at the same place Chris Farley had worked, mm -hmm. Tina Fey, and some of those folks that made it big. Wow. And he was a manager at a bar, like, and he served Chris Farley one of his last Whoa. drinks at night. So. It like really made him Sad. like I'm getting out of this world because that's mm. my path like mm -hmm. towards destruction. Wow. So I'm gonna actually help people. Yeah, hmm. um, yeah. That's awesome. That's crazy. I love Chris Farley. I do too. Rest in peace. Yeah. So back to <laughs> we'll go we back digress. to trauma, right? trauma. So we've talked yeah. about <laughs> sidetrack. We'll use a little therapeutic technique called summary. We'll just kind of so we easy talked word. about. I can say summary. Okay. You know, there's a lot of stuff that happens in the body. Nobody needs to know every, you know what I mean? Like your average person doesn't need to know. But a lot of things happen in the brain and in the body, especially early on, right? Mm -hmm. And we really diagnose it as PTSD or trauma when those things persist for a long period of time mm -hmm. and they cause some level of impairment. So we look mm -hmm. at all of our mental health conditions, like they have to cause some level of impairment and have been around, have some onset and duration. Mm -hmm. Right. So for trauma, when that happens, you know, we look at kind of that perpetual pattern where that body adapted to the stressor, mm -hmm. but not back to the kind of real life or benign kind of conditions. So let's say we didn't get to intervene with somebody in the first few days or weeks. They weren't mm -hmm. exercising. They weren't talking to friends. They kind of tight lipped, stuffed it down, mm -hmm. went back to work slowly over the course of months and years. You know, it affected their intimate relationships mm -hmm. and stuff at work and, and made them more bitter. So you get somebody maybe mid career that's had one or two of those that haven't been adequately dealt with. Yeah. Where's the, the new path they can take? What do those folks do? Yeah. What we suggest to them. I mean, I, I just say if maybe hopefully there's a person there that will notice that something's shifted at all. Um, I try to just notice, Hey, what's going on? Like if they have shifted and just, just kind of set them aside, just kind of talk for a little bit. Um, just trying to meet them where they are, like not like walking in, like I have this therapeutic intervention or whatever, just like trying to get, figure out what's going on, um, with them. I find a thing about them that like makes them unique and like, Oh, that book you're reading or whatever, just find something to meet them where they're at. Um, but if they're willing to, to, to learn about ways to kind of get unstuck, you know, we have to figure out what would that take for them to maybe go to counseling or go, what do they need? Like, who are their supports? Who are their people? Um, just kind of getting to know them really is a big piece because I know that they're, it's so hard to even talk to a counselor anyways. People have seen the movies about what the counselors are like, or they have all these preconceived ideas, you know? So I don't know if I'm fully answering your question. I think there's a Yeah, I think in yeah. part, in part yeah. you know, how we might act as, um, you know, a therapist or in that role. Mm -hmm. But let's say it's a peer or friend. Mid-career has had some of these things. Yeah. You know, still functioning to some degree, showing up to work. But we could, we could objectively say it's impacted. Yeah. You know, relationships, work, and kind of multiple spectrums of life. Right. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I think, honestly, just like having coffee sometimes with that, like, hey, come on in. Just trying to be not a jerk is my goal, I yeah. guess. I don't know. I'm just saying, oh, I can go talk to Jessica. Just like, say hi. Like, there's no 
she doesn't need anything or whatever. Just like, hey, um, trying to just normalize. What's going on? Like, how are you? Or I'll say, how are you? No, how are you really? I have to have enough energy to know how people answer that, though. I can't just yeah. walk around like Walmart and, how are you really? You know? No, I don't know. Maybe. Again, these are some big words here, so I'm not even going to try to pronounce them. It's okay. And if I if I need it, to you edit this it. out, I'll you edit this it. out. No, you can do <laughs> it. If I need to. Don't be condescending. You're good. Uh, no, I'm not. You can do it. <laughs> hey, believe. What? Well, there it is. <laughs> Uh, when we respond to a crazy situation, right? What's that enzyme in our body that gets released that can actually kill you if you don't like resolve it? You know what I'm talking about at all? Like that high something gets released. So, so I mean, obviously, like enzymes. the stress chemicals are cortisol, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. And, okay. and and we all have them to some degree, and they're basically that I mean, they're over a certain mm-hmm. yes, and, and when it's you, you get kind of adrenaline out, right? Yeah. You get yeah. adrenaline oh, yeah. fatigue, Burn which is a whole nother physical, yeah. you know, uh, disorder you can see. Yeah, when you see those over thresholds for a long period of time, because we've got a parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, mm-hmm. one's kind of fast and one's slow, like, survival is always going to win mm-hmm. over those more slower long-term processes. So things like right. digestion, yeah. um, muscle pain, you think of the acronym SLUD, salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, and there's another D that I'm forgetting. Hmm. I, yeah. But yeah. controls all of those things, yeah. right? So when you're in a fast gear trying to survive, like your your energy is not going towards digestion Mm-mm. and some of those processes. So right. you'll see those chronic conditions okay. kind of come out right. long term. Another chemical associated with that, like a cytokine storm. So these you know, at a very chemical level are coming mm-hmm. through there mm-hmm. and it's just really taxing to the energy mm-hmm. at a cellular level. Mm-hmm. And that's why sometimes staff might feel so drained Exhausted. after responding yeah. to something. Right. Well, in our, and in, in look at our environment. We go from, we have a very kind of dichotomous environment, which yeah. means two things, not a whole lot of bridge between, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're sitting, pushing buttons. You're almost dying of boredom to like, oh crap, there's a code one in dietary. Mm-hmm. Like everybody's got to get there, Right. Yeah. And then mix with like bureaucratic stress of, hey, we got mandated overtimes. We don't have enough for this. We don't have mm-hmm. that. So those kinds mm-hmm. of things that like boredom yeah. and stress are just always yeah. competing with one yeah. another at so, work. I never realized any of that. And that's why like I was like, struggling trying to think of what yeah. it was called. But like that was one thing I've genuinely tried working on as mm-hmm. well and trying to, to, to calm down that decompression after a stressful situation is so important. Yeah. Because if I don't decompress from that, if I don't decompress from that, I, that, that adrenaline won't go away. And mm-hmm. that, that, yeah. Yeah. And over time, that, that will kill you over time. Yeah. You, your me. body, you're reinforcing with your body if you don't teach it to be calm again, yes. that there's a payoff mm-hmm. for being excited. Yeah. And, and you look at, um, veterans, and it's kind of an easier population to study, mm-hmm. right? Like, if you're hyper vigilant, which is probably the most common symptom I see of PTSD, mm-hmm. scanning your environment, kind of always alert, not relaxing, that is the thing that keeps you alive the most. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it is taxing. Yeah. So right. imagine, like, your car, you know, when you're going down the interstate or the highway, you're, you're probably running at 3,000 RPMs. But let's say you could get there faster, you know, and you could shift gears faster if you're running at 8,000 RPMs. That's what we're doing. But a car that runs on average at 3,000 RPMs, you can probably get 170,000 miles out of. Mm-hmm. You run at 8,000, you're probably lucky to get 60,000 miles. Yeah. That's kind of mm-hmm. what we do to That's a good analogy, yeah. 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 But there's a reason we don't do the things. There's a reason we don't take the day off after a really stressful day, right? Yeah. For me, it's like guilt. Oh, I gotta be this worker. Like, there's this part to me, which is parts therapy is the thing we were talking about. That I have this, like, the hustler, this you gotta drive, drive, do these things, be a great worker, which is my own stuff that I sort of wheeled into correction. But I've always just had this hey, save the go to work when you're yeah. sick and save the day off for something I fun. I know, <laughs> but and I've seen people super, <laughs> like, super sick at work or yeah. like crying in the bathroom and then pulling themselves out. It's like, Dear Lord, what do we do to take a day? You're no good to anybody here. Yeah. Get some rest. You know? Yeah, and I say that to people. But I, you know, they one of the listen. things I think that I've seen from the debriefings, yeah. uh, and, and, and people haven't said this specifically, but there's such, and we see it in the military too, there's such an ownership to your peers that like, mm-hmm. forget me. And I, I think it's a really great selfless thing that like, yeah. it's not about me. Right. I got to show it for them to show right. show them that it's okay. And I can really appreciate that. But I just would encourage people to be mindful 
Right. What is the cost of doing that versus not right. doing that? And yeah. okay, yeah. if you have to show up the next day, well, then can you miss the following day? Right. You know, what's the compromise yeah. there for your your own yeah. safety and, and health? Yeah. Who can you kind of process with on when you're going to take a day? Because I know you'll see me like a Thursday or Friday. I'm so exhausted sometimes. I'm going floating. Like I just am. I'm sorry. I, I just keep thinking of like the Merrimack River. You just got your <laughs> that little. That sounds drink with cold. The straw, I don't know about that. You're sitting up there, yeah. like on a I've float in, in dirty my river closet. water. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, whatever you do, you you know. But so where do you float near you? Uh, right? Effingham float. It's about forty five minutes or thirty minutes away from us. Oh, Effingham is okay. Yeah, so it's just you literally go in the little pod and it, you can plug in. You can do some meditation in there. Um, some therapists are actually doing sessions, like they'll record their own like meditations and they're doing half with the therapist huh. and half there. It's kind of this new thing. I mean, for me, it's new and I've been doing it for about two years. Wow. And when I'm stressed, the first like time I went in there, it was stressful being quiet for an hour. For sure. Very for sure. stressful. Meditation sucks at first. Oh, Hypnosis worse. sucks at first. Yeah. Prolonged, ex all that stuff sucks. Yes. It's a skill you got to build. It is, up. but now my body craves it. Every other week, I need to float, and literally, you go to the sauna 40, 40 minutes in the sauna, and you go across the hall and you float. And no one bugs me. I turn my phone. You do on. an ice bath too? No, they don't have that there. But okay. I, I don't like cold. They have so no. there's saunas and floating. Floating. Cue float. the Joe Rogan. I was comment. gonna make the Joe there Rogan. It is. And no. first, jujitsu, elk meat, ice bath, sauna. Uh, I can't remember what else. I think and you're like, on like an episode roll with this with yeah. Joe Rogan. Yeah, you really watch this yeah. stuff, don't you? Yeah, I, cool. listen. Yeah, okay. I listen. I yeah. saw one Joe Rogan. Yeah. It was about the guy who was a runner and couldn't keep running. He kept like he was a marathon runner. I don't know. It's the whole thing. We'll get back to it. Ask him if he's a black belt now. <laughs> No, God, no. <laughs> I'm, I tell people I'm like a transparent belt. Yeah. Fine. I know just enough to get myself hurt. <laughs> Next thing you start shaving his hair off. No, God, I hope not. Yeah. If it falls out, it falls out. I'm not shaving. Probably a mohawk. I don't have a good head shape. I got like knots on the back here. Speaking of, let's see your glorious mane. Pull the I hat off. Stuck. I Pull the hat off. Let's see Just, just get the what hat off. What does this no, say it's, on it's the... dad life. I can't oh, read it's my nice. favorite. Dad life. No, no one... Look at that. That's beautiful. Why would you hide that? It's a mess. It's Why would nice. you hide that? My you God, feel tough. That's good. You feel tough. You got the hat off. Yeah. But, but no. like beards are like a man. Like no. they're really. Let it out, eyes. man. That no. is a beautiful head of hair. That's the end of this episode. Now <laughs> you got the hat like, that is a beautiful oh, head of hair. Oh, is he Thank embarrassing you? you? Is yeah. he... See, he has to be all weird like <laughs> I know. this. No, make it, make it awkward. Yeah, I'm the professional one. <laughs> we do. We do get weird. We like to get weird. So we'll we'll get back on topic. So. We have talked about kind of the body processes and trauma and how we don't recognize them and kind of, you know, at first some of those are normal, but then the chronicity of those over long periods of time just wear your body out faster. And so we see a lot of really common conditions, you know, health conditions mm -hmm. with our folks that, you know, were quasi autoimmune conditions, right? right. That like you can kind of control, but maybe yeah. not fully, you know, so it impacts like you know, mm -hmm. your resistance to glucose and insulin sensitivity, mm -hmm. right. um, hyperlipidemia, uh, blood pressure. So a lot of cardiac stuff, mm -hmm. digestion, all that kind of stuff gets out of whack. And a lot of us probably have family histories of it. You throw on a bad diet and then you put that stress on top of it. Mm -hmm. It's just like you are cooking with gas. Yeah, it is. And for me, I, I mean, honestly, I'd never had a history of working with anyone with chronic pain before. And I had back in my early counseling days, I was like, I don't really know if I can help them because I hadn't experienced any and I was running and doing all the things. But about two years ago, I had a car accident and I was kind of good for a few months. And I was like, I'm just going to keep doing all the things. I'm going to keep, you know, trying to stay, stay strong, whatever. And then my lower back, I was pushing a little, like a, like a big, um, what do you, they put the file folders in it. I'm trying to say, where's the word? <laughs> Like, like file folder, yeah. Like it, yeah, I was pushing one of those, cabinet? and I literally cabinet. It's a small little metal one, right? I can say cabinet. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, it's but like I, that right there. Yeah, right there. I was pushing it, but it was the half that size, and I literally remember, like, I'm not a big crier, but I was crying on my back, and I was asking my husband to come get me because I could not get up Oof. after pushing this little. I was a runner. I was doing my five mile runs, but I mean, that was my back literally going out, and it didn't. It literally, they said I had arthritis in my lower back. Wow. And literally, it's chronic stress of working in corrections mixed with a car accident equaled that. And so I and had running, to... which is good for you, but also kind of can yeah, wear and tear, too. But I love, I do love running. Like I, I have had to give that up yes. over the last couple of years after having hip surgery and low yeah. back issues. Some anatomy stuff wasn't perfect and ran too long and kind of hurt it. But, but mentally, I just loved running. There's nothing better. Part yeah. of it sucked and it was hard. <laughs> But like getting through it, 
Yeah. Like once you got out there and right. got a, your foot in front of the other, uh, you know, right. you got a couple hundred yards, everything was good. And mentally, you can't think about too much, but you can't go blank. And so it was yes. a nice meditation yes. for me. And so I miss it. So I've had to, you know, find some other me hobbies too. and habits yeah. and it's, it's a struggle. Yeah. And I think a lot of us are struggling with chronic pain though. I think there's a piece yeah. to corrections like that equals that. And there's a lot of not really explained why people have certain things for me as a, not, not that old, I mean, I'm kind of older ish, but, I don't know. but to be, have arthritis in my lower back and never have issues with my lower mm. back is insane to me. And doctors are like, we'll just give you epidural the shots. I'm like, okay, well that doesn't fix things though. Yeah. Right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. So I have to really be mindful when I take days, when I do self care, it's because of my back because I need to not have it get worse, you know? Yeah. And that's yeah. hard when you're an well, overachiever. I know it's wrapping up and everything for me. Mm -hmm. One thing that I know I'm going to look into personally is, is the floating. <gasps> Yay. Like, and see if maybe there's something like that local in our area. Cause I know okay. I, I find that they got an Effingham, probably Peoria. You're, yeah, you're I was thinking yeah. Peoria, but one thing I've I've also looked into is uh, the darkness retreats. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's darkness retreat. Go. Yeah, like oh. electronic free. Look it up. Okay. So, but, sounds but, but creepy. It's like, in the dark, no, it's not okay. ghosts and stuff. It's I'm just, just like, thinking of like some kind of camping trip where you reset <laughs> your your clock to it, like it, turn it, off your it's alarms. essentially like an internal reset, right? Okay. Of, of hmm. all the outside. circadian rhythms and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. But it was all like uh, just resetting yourself when it comes You're to... You're not selling it very well. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, trying to explain you know what it is. Okay. So there's right. no electronics. No electronics. You're resetting something. That's yourself. all I've got. Right. You're just turning it's... your phone off. Is that what you're saying? No. Well, like oh, you go in... You don't need to pay anybody to do that. You spend like, the weekend or the week in complete darkness. Right? The, the whole just week? you and yourself. Like and in your I, room? You're just like yeah. chilling in your room with I'm going to send you guys the information. <laughs> okay, you're just like, There's one up in Oregon that I'm like. Kind of yeah, if you like that pyramid scheme, <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> I know. I'll come up with something. Oh, God. <laughs> no, but I mean, there's. I have read the studies like about some of the nature retreats and the camping with people that have sleep problems. And after mm -hmm. about like 7, 10, 14 days, somewhere in there, getting your body on kind of more of a literal biological clock. Mm -hmm. Kind of resets. So and we have a lot of shift work because of the electronics. We're getting different lights and different signals to our body and brain that say wake up, and mm -hmm. some that say go to sleep. And then eating at certain times, like right. our sleep, kind of stinks. So anything yeah. that works on that, send me a link. I'll check it out. I'll, I'll you, tell I'll you if you're. Both I'll tell you if you're getting good. you're getting Sounds hosed good. or yeah. not. Yeah, and then it's you good. can say it, Joe's gonna get kidnapped or not. Yeah. yeah, we'll look at the, the it's at uh, it's at somebody's house downtown. Like, it's, just, <laughs> it's totally it's, fine. It also is an escape room. Weird. <laughs> no, but no, I'm I'm glad you joined us today. Yeah, I'm excited. Get these episodes yeah. out today, Thank and you. we can put it together. And I mean, if, yeah. I, I know I'm leaving this with with a lot more knowledge. I, I'm, of course, yeah, I, there's I'm, always... of course I'm bent, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm unwell as well. Or I'm broken. That. We're all a little broken. See, I always go back to the broken. Happy broken You're not broken. Happiness is broken a mat that sits on your doorway. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. get one more. One more, yeah. Third, or yeah. not, Matchbox 20 reference. Yeah. yeah. What's the theme today? Ted Lasso and Matchbox 20. Yeah. Yep. I think, I'm going go back to the broken one more time. Okay. The good, the reason I say it is I think as a helper, we get to this place where we think, I did, that I thought that I was this gift. I was like, oh, you come to me, I'll help you. You yeah. know what I mean? And then... When I had my people die of suicide, I was like, Lord, I couldn't help them. Mm. Like, and so I, I realized I'm more of a vessel. I'm not the gift. Yeah. So that's why you say broken. That's why I say that. Uh, I, you, it gives you this ego, I think, when you're this helper. There's no way anybody's going to be able to see this from here. I mean, <laughs> we can do some trickery. But yeah, I will try to zoom in. When, you say, again. when you say bent, you know, I and, and you mentioned you play guitar. Yeah. I used to. I sucked. It never was any good. But I love it. And I love yeah. music like yeah. you. Music is a part of my life, helps me change mood, outlook, me just relax. It provides so much for mm -hmm. me. And, you know, we dance in our kitchen all the time with the mm -hmm. kids. It's just a, it's a big part of our family. But we saw Willie Nelson last year at the State Fair. And if you, you remember his guitar, Trigger, I think he's had that since like the 50s, wow. right? And it's been fixed and it's been repaired. That's cool. There's so no guitar. In on this. There's probably no guitar on the market like... 
worth near that amount and that is not a perfect guitar he's not going to sell that oh yeah you know what i mean like if he were to put up for sale that's one of the most well-known guitars with that much character wow right and you go to a lot of good guitar players they go to like a shop to buy something Mm -hmm. they want that 69 les paul with like you know the pickups that were hand wound because like you can get these unique sounds yeah, right? mm-hmm. and with a little, you know, some like scratches, you know, somebody's played it at the gig, much cooler than something mm-hmm. shiny and new. That's how we are. We got character, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, and you got your character. Yeah. You play it. Yeah, play no, it. I agree. Yeah. I, I just for me with the whole broken thing because I yeah. always felt so helpless. Yeah, and what, what I look at being broken as unfixable, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And so that's one thing, like, internally, I tell myself, you, I'm not broken. Yeah. you just bent. Because bent's good. Yeah. Bent adds the character in my interpretation of, yeah. uh, of the sure. Yeah, yeah. And so that's why I always have just changed it to, uh, you're not broken, you're bent. That's good. Because broken almost yeah. kind of feels like it's in pieces. Like, you, like you yeah. drop a bottle. Or you drop yeah. A, and it's going to be nearly impossible. There's yeah. a, a practice, and I don't know the name of it, in Japanese culture you'll see with, like, pottery and oh. ceramics and stuff, yeah. where they'll actually mend it with, like, gold leaf. Mm-hmm. And those, again, are worth more than the, like, you know, mm-hmm. like. Yep. So even when you're broken, you're not broken forever. Yeah. Yeah. You can be repurposed and, yeah. you know, like. Yeah. So we have three different yeah. See, yeah, and I, takes and on I can it. Yeah. see that in people when they're struggling. I'm like, how are you really? When you're you're telling me you're good, but I can feel the energy, right? A lot yeah. of us are impasse and corrections, which is crazy, right? Because we can feel all these things. And you're like, oh, I got to keep boundaries around my energy, like we're talking about. But I think that gives me the ability to like meet people where they're at and not judge them. Just give them grace. Like, yeah, you're struggling. There was two weeks I literally stopped asking people how they were doing. And they stopped asking me how. They would say, hey, how are you doing? And I would just not. Like respond. Mm-hmm. That's not me. She's a nice one. She's always saying hi to us when we're getting smiling. coffee. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't know. There's pieces. But there. you know, it, it is as negative as I've ever been, or the bad weeks I've had. There's always enough people and corrections that provide that positive energy. Mm-hmm. And there's some people that are retired that I worked with for a year or two. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't have made that big of an impact on their life, yeah. right? Yeah. But they have made a huge impact on my life. There's always, there'll be a time where I'm down or something. And I swear, you know, I'm not really religious, mm. kind of spiritual, maybe. I don't know how to define it. But there is a retired person from Corrections who I used to work with, who my folks worked with. And I swear, probably three or four times a year, and it's almost always when feeling down, I'll get a text. Hey, man, how are you? Thinking about you and your mm. family. You know, what's... And it's like, there's somebody good out there that had mm-hmm. this much connection to me that's still trying to put positive in my life. Like, yeah. Yeah. I can get out there and play another day. Yeah. I'm inspired. Me too. So, yeah, be that person. Be curious. Be yeah. curious. Not, Not judgmental. judgmental. Yeah. Yep. yep. And do Ted yourself laughing. Do yourself. That's care. the last <laughs> reference for the night. Be <laughs> curious, not judgmental. Okay. All right. So, signing off, this is the fourth shift. Mind, body, and badge. Thank you to Jessica Wright. And, of course, my uh, co-host as always, Joe. Love you, buddy. We'll see you next time. Later, guys.